Hello friends, welcome to our channel Mechanical Motivator. In this video, we will be seeing inertia forces which will be acting on a reciprocating parts of an IC engine. So, here we are going to consider what are the forces which will be acting on the reciprocating parts of an IC engine by neglecting the weight of the connecting rod. So, in this entire thing, we are going to calculate or we need going to understand what are the kinds of forces which will be acting on the connect, acting on the uh, reciprocating parts just by neglecting the weight of the connecting rod. So, first force is piston effort. So, piston effort is nothing but the net force acting on the piston or cross set pin along the line of stroke. So, Fp is the piston force which will be acting on the piston or cross set pin which will be acting along the line of force. So, here we are having various kinds of forces. So, PC will be denoting the connecting rod, which will be having a force FQ, and CO is will be uh, will be uh, CO is the crank, which will be I mean this FQ is resolved into two components. One will be perpendicular to the crank, and another only along the crank. So perpendicular force is FT, and along the crank is FB. So uh, we need to understand few more things. That is no need to worry about the angles and all because we are going to just consider the forces alone. And uh, we will be having a Fn which will be acting along the sides of the cylinder walls or guide bars. So these are the base, few basic forces. So it's very easy. So we'll see one by one. So first thing is uh, MR. MR is nothing but the mass of the reciprocating parts, right? So MR is mass of the reciprocating parts. Uh, reciprocating parts like piston, cross set pin, or the joint pin in terms of kg and wr is the weight of the reciprocating part in terms of newton so mass into gravity so if you want to calculate the acceleration of the reciprocating part so ar is the acceleration of reciprocating part which is nothing but acceleration of the piston we already derived in previous video so acceleration of piston formula is this so accelerating force or inertia force both are same so inertia force of reciprocating part so fi this fi will be denoting the inertia forces so Fi is equal to just multiply the reciprocating mass of the reciprocating part into acceleration of the reciprocating part. So just multiply the MR mass of the reciprocating part to the acceleration. So MR into acceleration of the piston. So we'll be having the formula. So piston effort is nothing but net load on the piston as we already saw. So minus or plus inertia force. So minus or plus is uh, mainly due to just coming back to the uh, diagram. So imagine the crank is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction. Crank is rotating in anti-clockwise, I mean clockwise direction. Yeah, it's clockwise direction. So, so when it the crank rotates in clockwise means the piston will be moving. The piston is accelerated. So pis once the piston is accelerated means the negative sign is used when piston is accelerated. And after the uh, complete uh, rotation, the piston will be going returns. That is the piston is retarded. So positive sign is used when piston is retarded. So when it is accelerated, we use negative sign. When it is retarded, we use positive sign. So initially it's getting accelerated and fine, and then it's getting retarded. So minus and plus mainly due to that reason. So in first case, we won't be uh, considering frictional force. If the frictional force is not given means just neglect it. If the frictional force is given means just put minus RF and this minus is same for both acceleration and degradation because it will be acting in the opposite direction so we are getting minus so rf is the frictional resistance now we are going to calculate the in in case of a for example if in case of a uh, double double acting reciprocating steam engine means we will be having two different pressure and two different area for that purpose the load on the piston that is the net load will be can be written as p1 a1 minus p2 a2 this A2 can be written as A1 minus A. So P1 and A1 are the pressure and cross-sectional area on the back end side of the piston and P2 A2 is nothing but pressure and area on the crank end side of the piston. So this A will be uh, representing the cross-sectional area of the piston rod. So next is uh, if in case the diameter of the piston is given, if capital D is given, so net load on the piston can be written as FL 
into pressure fl is equal to pressure into area so we know pressure is nothing but force by area right so similarly just multiply area output i mean area to the other side so pressure can be written as p and area can be written as pi by 4 d square so these things holds good for horizontal engine if in case of a vertical engine means what happens we need to consider the weight of the reciprocating parts that will be weight of the reciprocating part will be considered when the piston is moving from downward stroke that is when the piston moving from top dead center to bottom dead center so at that time we will be putting as plus and when it is moving from bottom to top we will be putting it as minus so here weight of the reciprocating parts are considered when i mean in case of vertical engine so plus is denoting denoting when uh, piston moves from top to bottom and minus will be denoting when piston moves from bottom to top next thing is the next force is uh, what uh, force acting on the connecting rod so fq is the force acting on the connecting rod so fq is nothing but we will be having a formula so fq is equal to fp by cos phi so fq formula they have given fp divided by cos phi and uh, cos phi can be written as cos phi we can easily write cos phi can be easily written as yeah uh, this is the formula for cos phi cos phi is equal to root of 1 minus sin square theta by n square so these thing we already saw in derivation also so just write instead of cos phi write the formula so fq can be written as fp by root of 1 minus sin square theta divided by n square and next force is uh, force acting on the sides of the cylinder walls or guide bar thrust acting on the sides of the cylinder wall so here yeah, thrust on the sides of the cylinder wall or normal reaction on the guide bars can be written as fn so it's easily denote can be seen from the diagram so this fn we going to calculate or we going to have a formula so fn is nothing but fq sin phi so fq we already got sin phi fq is nothing but fp by uh, fq is nothing but fp by cos phi so fp by cos phi into sin phi so sin phi and cos phi uh, we know that uh, sin phi by cos phi is tan phi so finally fn is equal to fp tan phi so we have calculated three forces now the next is the crank pin effort and thrust on the crankshaft bearing so coming back to the diagram this force this uh, force acting on connecting rod is resolved into two component one will be acting perpendicular to the crank so that is known as crank pin effort ft and second force will be acting along the crank towards the bearing so that force is uh, denoted as fb b means bearing and t means torque or crank pin effort or turning moment just try to remember like that so crank pin uh, that that's what they have written here so finally we will be getting ft is equal to fq sin theta plus phi so fq can be written as uh, we already know fq is nothing but fp by cos phi see here fq is nothing but fp by cos phi so instead of fq write fp by cos phi and write as it is sin theta plus phi so here we will be having fb if it's along the crank means fb fp is nothing but fq uh, cos theta plus phi so this is uh, horizontal and uh, this is uh, horizontal and that is vertical component that's why cos and sin they are resolving so uh, horizontal component is cos and vertical component is sin so fq we can write as fp by cos phi which we already saw fq is equal to fp by cos phi so right as it is so cos theta plus phi so we have got the formula for ft and fb and uh, fifth one is crank effort or turning moment or torque on the crankshaft t so that, uh, it is nothing but product of crank pin effort ft and the crank pin radius so ft into r will be giving the torque which is nothing but crank effort or turning moment or torque on the crankshaft so t is nothing but ft into r this ft can be written as this ft so ft we got previous right so this ft can be written as whatever we got here fp by whatever formula we have just write as it is fp sin theta plus phi by cos phi into r so this formula sin theta plus phi can be written as sin theta cos phi plus cos theta sin phi divided by cos phi now divide this cos phi wholly if you divide means this cos phi and this cos phi will get cancelled and sin phi by cos phi we can write as tan phi so just sin, uh, cos phi cos phi will get cancelled so just sin theta will be having and sin phi by cos phi write as it is sin phi by cos phi is tan phi 
and write it as r, just into multiply by r radius. So we know that L sine phi is equal to r sine theta. So we already saw, right, we are uh, seeing only the vertical component. So because of that, we only, we are getting like this. So sine phi keep as it is and um, sine phi keep, a, keep as it is and bring the L downwards. So R by L is sine theta. This R by L can be written as N is equal to connecting rod length by crank radius, L by R. So it is nothing but one by N we'll be having. So sine theta by N. So sine phi is equal to sine theta by N. These things also we already saw in derivation. So now we are just going to recall whatever we saw. So cos phi can be written as 1 minus sin square theta. So this cos phi can be written as as it is. And sin phi we know sin theta by n. So these things also we already saw. So root of 1 minus sin square theta by n square. If we take n square outside means we will be having only n. So square root and square, square and square root would get cancelled. So 1 by n root of take LCM. So n square minus sin square theta. Keep as it is. So tan phi is nothing but sin phi by cos phi and sin phi we can write. Sin phi can be written as sin theta by n. So sin theta by n. Cos phi can be written as as it is. So this n will be going to the numerator and uh, n by, I mean root of n square minus sin square theta will be coming denominator. This n, this n get cancelled. So finally sin theta by root of n square minus sin square theta we will be having as it is. So just substitute instead of tan phi, instead of tan phi just substitute the entire term as it is so finally we will be having like this bring this r to this side under uh, sine theta plus uh, here we need to have a small modification so just multiply and divide by 2 just multiply and divide here by 2 because 2 cos theta sine theta can be written as sine 2 theta so 2 cos theta sine theta can be written as sine 2 theta for that purpose we are multiplying and dividing by 2 so here we will be getting sine 2 theta as we saw earlier so the as it is 2 will be extra here so keep as it is so now just we going to have a comparison since the sine square theta that is the sine square theta is very smaller when compared to n square we already saw in derivation also so just neglect the entire term so finally, the n square, if it, if it comes outside, means it will be having 2n alone because square and square root would get cancelled. So finally, the crank effort T is equal to Fp into R sin theta and sin 2 theta divided by 2 into n. And this entire term, whatever term it's next to Fp can be written as OM. So in claim construction, we, are, uh, we know that the entire term can be written as OM. So OM is equal to write the entire term. So this is the basic, I mean, these are the various forces which will be acting on the reciprocating parts of the IC engine. And uh, <clears throat> with these formulas, we can solve few more problems which we will be seeing in the upcoming videos. In case if you are having any doubt means just type in the comment section. And these are a basic mathematical equation and uh, reduce, we just we are reducing them. So in case if you feel any difficulty means you try to write in the comment section. Please do subscribe to my channel, Mechanical Motivator, and press the bell icon. Then only you will be getting all the videos which I upload. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.